Shalom, Wam, Ahab, Wa, Barak. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory for Kal Shalayama, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rala Kadash. Peace, love, and blessing. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, which everybody so ignorantly calls God in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, that everybody so ignorantly calls Jesus, and in the Holy Spirit. Today, I'm just going to read a little bit today, that's all. I'm going to go ahead and, um, I was thinking that um, I would read um, Deuteronomy. chapter 28 and since we never kept any of the laws let's start at 15 we're just going to read 15 through 68 and we're going to um, we're going to go with that for today but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai who observe and do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So on. Um, I mean, you can take that two different ways. Last hired, first fire. You go out in the field to work farms. You can even see uh, what was it called? Uh, sharecropping. We didn't get anything out of that. We, we, we were cursed both ways. Cursed in the city, just walking around cursed in the field, just walking around by the same cop. I'm just saying, just saying. Cursed shalt thou be the fruit of thy, cursed shalt thou be, cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Back to sharecropping. Plus, although all Israelites are on welfare right now, why do have jobs? Barely any food. No food at the store. No way to get to the different store where all the food is. You know, the other neighborhood with the other people. They all have food. Hmm. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Well, that goes back to sharecropping too. Just with the land, with your body, you're not going to be very healthy. And the fruit of your body would be your children. They're not gonna they're 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 gonna be cursed too. They take it both ways. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Okay? The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. You know, let's look those words up. You know I'd like to look up some words. Let's see what vexation is. Biblical definition of vexation. The suppression of the spiritual guidance of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what that said? Vexation is a suppression of the spiritual guidance of the Holy Spirit and is a trial and is a trail that causes one to question their faith or draw them. So when he vexes you, you're done. Let's see what rebuke means. What is the biblical definition of rebuke? To reprimand. To criticize sharply. So rebuke, reprove, same thing. But also When you rebuke someone biblically, when, yeah, when you, you just, um, let's go backward. Like I said, you reprimand them. Let's just keep it basic. Let's keep it basic. Um, also, um, 
Let's go to uh, verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand upon for to do, until thou be destroyed and until thou perish. Quick, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. He's telling you, you're being wicked, you've sort of forsaken him, and um, there's going to be a lot that's going to happen. And I'm about to show you, because, uh, what did they say? Uh, black Hebrew Israelites. So, I'm going to show you, just right now, that this is going to pertain to a lot of people who are getting these curses. A lot of people are getting these curses right here. All the way up to 68. That is the main curse to let you know who you are in this day and age. But, let's keep going. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he has consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Pestilence. Do you know what the biggest pestilence we have is... Uh, so-called black people in the ghetto, roaches. 22, the Lord shall spike thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with a sword and with a blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. It literally sounds like Everything is going to hit you. You're going to get fevers. You're going to get inflammation, extreme burning, and with the sword. Okay, so um, let me just keep going. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. Uh oh. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Thy heaven that is over thy head is brass, and the earth that is under thee is iron. That's imprisonment. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou beest destroyed. So, I don't know if you guys noticed that, um, just saying, just the rainstorms alone, when they hit um, places like Haiti and all of the Caribbean islands, man, they tear those places up. And nobody helps those people. Nobody's getting any help over there. Not one single island has got um, government assistance, let's say that. <laughs> And the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies, and thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them. Thou shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. We tried to flee seven ways in the New Testament. Go run. He said it too. We need to get out of here. If you see the Romans coming, flee to the mountains. We flee everywhere. They still caught us. They still put us into captivity. If you're not in captivity, why do you pay taxes? That's giving tribute to the king. Who gives tribute to the king? The slaves. You guys got to wake up. You got to wake up. So, let's keep going. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowl of the air and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Have you ever been to a picnic? Pick a nigga and hang him from a tree? Or how about the delectable nigger? Just boil them down, or roast them up, and eat them yourself. They they do this, literally. And do you think that they were caught calling the birds to stop pecking at you while you were dying? Nah. They didn't fray them away. They liked it. That's just an example. Because that directly happens to you. So let's keep going. This is why they get mad and say, black Hebrew Israelites, because you hung us from trees and birds physically ate at us. We didn't do 
anything about it. You burned us, you beat us, burned us, then hung us. And there are books that say that you used us for food. And there's, of course, the nigga suits, nigga boots. Come on now. 27. The Lord will smite thee with the, with the botch of Egypt and with the uh, emeralds and with the scab and with an itch, wherefore thou canst not be healed. Another disease. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. You will not be able to understand the scripture. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in the darkness because you don't know what's going on, what's going to happen next. You just wish it was all over, but you don't know what you're wishing was over. That's the funny part. You don't even know what you're wishing for because you don't know what to wish for. You're at the bottom of society and you keep trying to defend the one that keeps you down there. Like the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. But no, nope. you're, you're waiting for them to save you first, just like I just said. Verse 30, thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt, and you know what? Almost, it's almost impossible to marry a woman in this day and age and her be a virgin. Almost impossible. Thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. And you know what, let's go back to that. Thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lay with her. You know that the slave masters would come in right in front of the slaves and do that. Every night to their wives. Can you imagine that feeling? All you had to do is follow the instructions. We couldn't do that, could we? So now we all, as a nation, have to keep going through this until it's over. We all, as a nation, fell off, too. So now we all have to come back together. Well, at least one third of us has to come back together. And we got 144,000 elect that are going to be rulers over the one third. And then that two thirds got to die a horrific death, and they'll be born back into the kingdom. Let's keep going. Thou shalt be trod and wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. You know what I do for a living? I build houses for the wealthy. Not, I mean like really expensive houses, let's just say that. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof, like sharecropping. But also, you're gonna be doing it for other people because you ain't gonna have your own vineyard. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes and thou shalt not eat thereof. Hold on, the ox is going to be slain before our eyes and we won't be able to eat it. You mean like the native nation who you're saying, oh, it's our black Hebrew Israelites. Native nation. They had their ox slain. They weren't able to eat it. There's plenty of photos. There's plenty of photos um, putting all this together for you so you can just look at it if you wanted to. There's a giant pile of dead ox furs and all of these people are happy. You know why they killed the ox? So we wouldn't have any food to eat. So they could take us out easier. So let's start that one again. Got a little windy, blew it around a little bit, that's all right. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. And it's funny, because they said 40 acres and a mule violently taken away. They never even gave us the mule. But the animals that we did have were violently taken away. I, my, my ancestors had a farm. So all this stuff got taken. Violently taken away from before thy face. And shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemy, and thou shalt not have done to rescue them. So in other words, they're going to take your everything. They're going to they're, they're going to divvy it up. There ain't going to be nothing you can do about it. Should have kept the laws. This is uh, literally, let me go back to Deuteronomy 28, 15 again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of Yahweh, Baha, Shem Yahweh Shai, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
These are the curses that are upon you, that are overtaking you. This happened to the native nation, and you're saying black Hebrew Israelites trying to make it into a narrative. How in the, how is it that right here, let me read it again, because that's just too much. The ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemy, and thou shalt have and thou shalt not have none to read to rescue them. So think about it. I mean, do you really have to think about it like that? But that only happened to the so-called Indians in this land when they wanted to take us out. And there's a lot of photos that prove that. Like they love those photos. They love showing up all those guys standing around, all the oxen they killed. Yeah, I remember that too. I remember it well. 13, 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. The Mexicans had their kids taken away three years ago, 1,500 kids, and they still haven't seen them. They still never showed back up. Not to mention slavery at three years old, they would take your kid off of the plantation and put him on a different plantation so you couldn't rebuild your family and have that strength. Three years, look this stuff up, man. Why don't you guys get off the fucking couch and do some research? This is more than just black people do. We just proved that it's Indians and aren't the Mexicans just part of the native nation? So now we've got the blacks, Hispanics, and the Indians, so-called black, so-called Hispanic, so-called Indians are already penned in here. So you're gonna have sons and daughters. They're gonna take them from you. There's gonna be nothing you can do about it. And you're gonna be looking out for them all the day long, just wishing that you could have your kids back. It says it right here, and that's for not keeping the instructions that he gave us. Let's keep going. The fruit of thy land and all of thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. So systematically, the harder we work, which they're devouring us through labor right now, but they're devouring up our labors. And what they do is if they'll give you a dollar raise, they raise the price of everything by $3. Now you're $2 behind for getting a raise. That's how they devour us up. They, they, they've got all, and that's just one. That's, you know, that's just a, just a brush off the top. Just a psh. So anyway, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The Lord will smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore box that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Another disease, he's just throwing them in there. They're getting better too, huh? That one's from head and toe. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood, and stone. Muslims have a place called Mecca where they circle around a stone and everybody kisses it. Christians, what do they have? They have the wooden cross. Those are both lies. Christianity is a lie, Islam's a lie. That's why nothing ever happens with them and only the pastor at the church gets rich while the people starve and go home yet he drives a Rolls Royce. Give me a break. That's oh. Like I said, you're gonna worship gods neither our fathers nor ne neither the, the, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And there, and thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword. Dumb as nappy headed as nigga. That is a proverb and a byword. Look at him. 
scumbag. That's what they see us as. That's what they turned us into. And they use that against us. Doesn't matter how clean you are or how great you are. As soon as you do one little thing, they run to the mountaintops. They hate you. They put you here for death. But whatever. Go ahead. Pray for them. See how that works. And thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a high word among all nations, whether thou shalt, whether the Lord shall lead thee. We're going to be scattered to all the nations. They're going to treat us like garbage. They're going to make us the, uh, uh, um, the, the root of all their problems. But really, they're the problem. But we're going to be the problem in the Bible. Like I said, come, nappy head and ass. That's the problem. Look how this dumb now hit of that nigga can't do no work. There you go. But anyway, okay, let's move on. 30 and 38. Thou shalt carry much seed into the field and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Hmm. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. You ain't even, even the bugs are coming after your ass. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine oil shall cast his fruit. Mm. I'm sorry, thou, thou, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Mm. Let's, let's see what it means. You want to know what it means? I'll show you. Let's see what cast his fruit means. What's the biblical definition of cast his fruit? To throw off. So when trees cast their fruit, or a serpent will cast his skin, what does he do? He takes it off. So to throw off. So you're going to have, and I just want to make sure you get past what I'm saying so you know. But anyway. Thou shalt have all the trees throughout thy coast, but the, um, thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil for thy Olive shall cast thy fruit. It shall throw the fruit right off of the tree. Won't be able to use it. There shall be got thou shalt be got sons and daughters. Here we go again. This is a precept to verse 32. Thou shalt be got sons. So let me read 32 again. Thou shalt thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Why? I'm going to show you. Go to verse 41. Thou shalt begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So they're going to take your kids and turn them into slaves too. They did that in slavery. The kids that disappear, and I hate to say it, but they use them as all kinds of different slaves. The worst things that you could possibly ever think of. Look at the... Um, I don't even want to say anybody's name and get my video pulled, so never mind. Let's keep going. 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The 43. The stranger that is with thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So you see people getting ahead of you in life and you ain't getting nowhere, but you're doing the same thing. You're like, I'm working hard, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But you can't get anywhere because this ain't your rest. This place was put here for somebody else. You are here to serve a curse and a reproach for not keeping the laws. Why don't you pay attention? There's no reason to try and get comfortable here. You try and get too comfortable on side and I just pull the rug out from under you. That's why you better just be circumspect, keep the laws. Keep the high holy days. Keep the Shabbat. Keep the ordinances. Figure out how 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 are, how am I supposed to dress? Just knowing I, is uh, better than not knowing. 
even if I can't do it every day because the way they have woven the clothes together to make sure we can. But still, study to show thyself approved. Faith without works is dead. So why am I reading this to you? Because this is where we're at right now. This is what we're getting. They're way above us, and we can't get nowhere. 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. That's why you don't, and if you say, oh, I own this, do you own the textile company? Do you own the mine? Can you mine the materials down? No, because we don't have nothing. Israel doesn't even have a, we don't even have a nation. We're not mentioned as a people. We're just invisible. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Talking about the curses. Because thou hast served not the Yahweh Baha'i Shem with Yahweh Shai with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. If you serve the Most High with joyfulness, gladness of heart for abundance of all things, you would be keeping the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. You would be keeping the Passover. You would be keeping Hanukkah. You would be keeping the, the Feast of Weeks. You would be keeping the fast every year. You would be dressing a certain way. You would shut it down every Shabbat. Whatever it is, you're not doing it. So don't sit there and pretend like you are. Because thou service not Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, Shalt thou serve thine enemies, when Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. I just, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. You're going to be in want of all things. Nakedness, like I said, you don't own textiles, you don't own mine, you can't break shit down. Nothing. You have nothing. We're not a nation. We're just a bunch of people that they won't even like. They they do they call us black. They call us all these different things than what we really are. The word black means destitute of life. That means to be evil. How is it that my nation is evil? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. When you go into darkness, you lose color. You get lighter. Yet. They're calling dark light and light dark. <laughs> and then they get everybody mixed up with that instead of knowing that we're a speckled bird and that we're all different colors and we've been scattered to all four corners of the earth so we're going to look like the people that we have been scattered near. I'm going to place you among all nations. All of them. 48, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, thirst, and in nakedness, and in one of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So if you go back into slavery, we wore a physical yoke of iron on our neck. And what he would do is make us keep wearing this thing until in our minds we were destroyed and we wouldn't run away anymore. They physically did that. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. The Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of earth, as swift as an eagle flyeth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because when we got here, we spoke Hebrew. The native nation that was already here spoke Hebrew. When Christopher Columbus, which his real name is Cristobal Colon, who took the Bible in the Apocrypha and used it as a map with a Hebrew interpreter, that's how he got here. 
That's why it says a different tongue, because they didn't speak the same language. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks, or thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. So what did the oppressor do? He came in, he destroyed everything, he destroyed the whole country. In fact, now he's in the middle of destroying the whole earth. But it's because we didn't keep the laws, so we have nothing left. If we would have followed instruction like we were told according to the scripture, this wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be happening, but we were stupid. We don't follow instruction. We're, um, uh, how would you say, hard, heavy, or hard-hearted, just mean. Verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai hath given thee so why don't we have land why aren't we a, a, a nation of people because the most high saw to it that all of that was destroyed in fact if you were a native nation like me you would know about not only did we have cities, but they were built out of brick, and we had water duct systems, and we had sewer systems, and we had strip malls, and this was all before Christopher Cologne came down here. He destroyed it, and you know what they did when they destroyed all of our cities? They built their cities on top of it. Do some research. Thinking that we ran around in tents all of our life. You gotta be fucking joking. All of our existence that's just horrible to think that's what that we're not nomads nomads came from Siberia and let me go to 52 again and he shall besiege thee in thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land wherewith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai hath given thee 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? The flesh of thy sons and thy daughter, which the Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood. Flavor enhancers, your dead baby. H E K 293. Look it up. 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Dead beat nigga. Wait, there's more, but you got your woman. Let me see. 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he and in straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Awesome. So let's keep going. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil towards her husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter. That's a whole different class in itself. Those, both of those, those verses are literally a whole entire class. I'm going to go to 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of the law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, which people so ignorantly say, but it's really Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Then 
Yahweh will make thy plagues wonderful. Now here comes the real diseases and the plagues of thy seed. Indeed, even, there it is, that old English word. Indeed, great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness and long continuance. Woo! What's happening right now? We're having germ games. We're having the germ games right now. Moreover, he will bring upon the all the diseases of Egypt which thou wast afraid of and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law, them will the Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Here they come. Here it comes. That's right. It's written and they're doing it and you're seeing it and you're denying it. And you wonder why nothing works for you. I don't understand why God don't work for me. Because you don't work for God. You don't. Yahweh don't work for you because you don't work for Yahweh. So. 62. And you shall be. Sixty-two, and ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And it shall come to pass that as the Yahweh reject rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. And to bring you to not, which means to nothing. And so it doesn't mean that he has to put you to death to destroy you. He could take you from outside of, he could take you from a. Um, sorry, I got a little technical difficulties here. Right there. There's a lot of heat out here today. But to destroy you, he could take you from, let's just say you live in New York, you live in a penthouse on a flat on the top, complete top of the building. And the most high decides, you know what? Nah. Give it all back. Give everything back. Every single thing. And, um, you have to realize that there's nothing you can do about it. Because the first thing that happens is like what happened to Job. They came running from every direction telling Job what? Oh, this this happened. That happened. You lost everything, Job. In a blink of an eye. Everything. And then he got sick, botched with swords. He caught every plague that was written in this book, plus the ones that I don't even know about because I wasn't there. But he did all that to Job. So don't think he can't do it to you. And don't think that he won't. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to... Um, Let's go back to, let's go to 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even indeed unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thy fathers nor thy fathers, um, neither, neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. Like I already told you earlier, and um, like I already told you earlier, the wood is a Mecca where they go around the rock and kiss it, and this, that's, that's the stone, and the wood is Christianity, the wooden cross. All right, and among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. You're either going to be running, working, or in prison. But, the, but Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. That's why you can't shake it. He's the one that made you feel a little bit depressed. Verse 66. 
and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. I don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. I'm living week to week and shall have none assurance of thy life. So let me read it again. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. You can walk out the door and be shot at any man. You can get pulled over by any type of cop. I mean, every every police car says proudly serving since 1865. And we all know that slavery ended in 1863. They put black codes in in 1864 and started enforcing them in 1865 when they turned the, the slave catcher into the sheriff. So believe me, day or night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. How could we be sure? There ain't nobody here to protect us. And 67. In the morning thou shalt say, Would, would Yahweh it were even? And at even thou shalt say, Would Yahweh it were morning? And for the fear of thy heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. At night, you, were just, you, you just wish it was morning. In the morning, you just wish it was night. You just want these days to be over. It's the whole point. You want these days to be over. Not this day, all these days. All these days are evil and wicked. Not just one of them. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto you thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you the Lord shall bring you back into bondage the word Egypt in the dictionary means burnt faces but the biblical definition of Egypt is bondage and um, actually um, the most high is the one that uses it in a bondage form so when you go to uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 and 2 it says and Yahweh spake and what did he say all these words saying I am Yahweh which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is referred to as bondage according to scripture. Like I said, the actual definition means burnt faces. So let's say burnt faces in bondage. All right? So you will go back into a place with burnt faces and bondage with ships. How's that? We'll use both definitions together. It seems to work. You will have burnt faces in bondage. How's that? <laughs> you will have, you, you shall, they shall bring you back into bondage with ships by way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The way they put us into slavery on the transatlantic slave ships for 400 years, on this, I mean the transatlantic slave trade for 400 years, you'll never see that again in history. They're never going to be able to accomplish that. And if you've never seen it before in history, that's why it says, by whereof you shall see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, for bondsmen and bondswomen, but no man shall buy you. So in other words, you're going to be sold unto the oppressor, they're going to be dilly-dallying and trading you off back and forth, and you know what? The part where no man shall buy you, it means that in... Um, Actually, in our Levitical law, if you were in bondage, I could come in and buy you out of bondage. And in this bondage, we wouldn't be able to buy each other out of bondage because we would both be in bondage together. On top of that, they have Freeman papers. So when there was the transatlantic slave trade, there was a Freeman paper. And for a man to buy you would be to buy your freedom no man would buy your freedom 
unto this day. You Now they've even made it worse. You don't realize they've made it worse because now you can't even leave the country unless you get vaccinated. Why? You have to correspond with them when everybody knows they don't work. And if they did work, I wouldn't fucking use it anyway because I'm not into what would be called uh, uh, witchcraft. Pharmacia. Pharmacy. What's the definition? Witchcraft. You guys got to do some homework. With that being said, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you're able to get something out of this message. Shalom.